Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody, and welcome to these videos. It's a series. Basically, um, anything that you need to know about the new Xbox release of The Sim. Um, you know, we're going to take a bit of footage from each of the streams I've been doing over the last few days, and it's going to focus in on some kind of particular things, be it setting up your controllers, what to do in The Sim, where to take off from, uh, and some of the different settings you can use. So I hope you find this series somewhat helpful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or opinions, do leave them in the comments below. or do read them. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the skies soon. So what we're going to do, uh, I have a mouse, man. Uh, now the mouse, right? When you plug in a mouse to your Xbox, it's a little bit weird. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't... It's like it's trying to stick to the walls or something. It needs an update. Anyway, to start us off, we're going to go into the options. Now, if you can't see the top of my screen, it's just that's where the options hide. Hang on, how do we resize this? Hang on. We're going to use science again. Hold on to your hat, boys. If I just do this, will it, you know, whooshing? Yeah, it's not full screen now for the minute, but we'll just leave it here so you can see everything. All right? Remind me to change that now. Do you know? Uh, so, with the mouse, the moose... Uh, we're going to go into a couple of things, uh, because for the PC users, uh, if you guys are using the Xbox, well, there's a couple of things we can do uh, in the settings uh, to make it look more and more like the kind of beefed up flight simulator that we're used to over on the world of the um, of the PC. So to start us off, we're going to go into the general options. General? Yes. Options. Yes. So graphics can't do much. Camera, we can do some stuff. Alrighty. So we have, uh, you know, the different cameras in which we can select. Um, here's something for you. Do you ever notice if you're in an external view, you have a heads up display? You know, you can see your altitude, your speed, you know, you can see what you're doing and where you're flying. If you want, you can turn that off. And I've turned it off on mine because I go for the whole look at the state of that kind of view, do you know? So do you see where it says chase camera, instrument, heads up display, or hood? Turn it off. Or if you, if you really need to, you can turn it back on again. Because if you like flying in third person, you can see all the dials and, and what's happening. Uh, but if, like me, eh, you don't need that. We can sense what we're doing. We can feel the speed. Uh, well, you can turn it off there. So that's the first thing. We're learning. Write this stuff down. Next up, we have uh, free look momentum and free look speed. Uh, again, if you're going to be using a mouse, and you can use your mouse to control the views, which is, uh, it can be a little bit easier. You can kind of mess around with some of the zoom speed and the free look speed, and then you have free look momentum. Essentially what the free look momentum is, it kind of adds a movement, if you like, of simulation into the aircraft, whereby, you know, if you turn the camera, it won't just be a very sharp movement. It'll be kind of fluid and simulating how the real eyes work, you know, uh, and then... You can also add in a camera shake. You know, it's all there. Now, other things we're going to do. If you go into your sound, things are sound. If you're flying along in an external view and you don't necessarily want to hear the autopilot or the sim or whatever, uh, even ATC talking to you from outside the aircraft, you can click on this where it says warning sounds in external view. Well, you can turn it off. Do you know what I mean? There's so many things we can do. Uh, you can also select your music, uh, you can have your text-to-speech settings, as in they're the voices. I hear voices, they're the voices in your head. Do you know what I mean? Uh, then you have all your kind of sound stuff here. Uh, now, because I use my own music, you know, uh, well, I just turn off the in-sim music to off. Uh, but if you want the music on, well, you can change all the stuff in there. Moving on, into traffic. Aircraft traffic type. Uh, there's a couple of bugs here. I'm leaving this off for the moment. Uh, you can use real-world traffic, whereby, you know, the sim will download information based on the real-world air traffic, uh, and it'll inject it into your sim. For the moment, I'm leaving that off. Uh, you have a button down here that says, show traffic nameplates. Basically, if you're flying along, I wonder who your man is, you know, flying like that. Well, that's where you turn them on and off. So I use these um, quite a bit. Now, some of these things here, the airport life. On the PC, we used to always turn these right down. And the reason being is, well, it was kind of wasting your CPU. Uh, but because with DirectX 12, the ceiling of which, you know, the CPU can operate, uh, well, they've doubled and tripled it. So all of these things can all be now on 100%. Now, you might say, for what? 
the airport vehicle density. If you want, if you find, you know, rogue fork trucks or like trucks driving up and down the runways and the taxiways and you're thinking that looks kind of strangely odd, but that's where you turn them off. Airport vehicle density, whooping, and you can turn them off if you want. Uh, the ground aircraft density, they're all the parked aircraft. When you arrive at an airport, there could be, uh, you know, static aircraft or just non-playable NPCs for the Xbox gamers. Uh, well, you can turn them off as well if you want. Then you have the worker density, you know, Jimmy, Timmy and Billy. Uh, the lads, they're walking around doing their thing. Uh, well, you can turn them off from here. Then you have your land and sea traffic. Uh, so your leisure boats, your road vehicles, ships and ferries, and fauna. Now you might say, Murph, what's fauna? Uh, animals. Animals, man. It's for animals. <laughs> Uh-oh. Sir Murphbot. DC, it, it just, it give it a very wide berth. That Sir Murphbot, albeit a legend, he's a devil. He has much to learn. We're being very cautious with him, you know. I watched Terminator before I installed that. Skynet. It's self-aware. It's alive. Do you know what I mean? What about sea boats? <laughs> yes, there's sea boats in the house. Plenty of sea boats, yes. Ah. Murphbot getting the FOFs. <laughs> it's like, it's coded into them. Right, moving on to data. Now, this is important, uh, and this will affect a lot of what goes on for your viewing, playing, and, well, just in general. Online functionality. Essentially, you're going to tell the sim, I want to be online. Therefore, you have access to multiplayer, photogrammetry, satellite data, real world weather, traffic, everything. Online functionality. The sim requires to be online. Uh, so we just make sure all of these dudes are turned on. All right. If you're on a metered connection, if your internet provider gives you an allowance, well, you can tell the sim, hey, this is my allowance, don't go over it. And the sim will track it in a monthly period and it'll say, okay, once you get up to like, I don't know, 80 gigs, we're gonna turn off automatically the online functionality. We, you know, you can still talk to Microsoft to say, listen, it's me, I want to play the sim. It'll dial you in, but it will turn off everything else. That's super handy if you are on a metered bandwidth. Do you know what I mean? So you can put it in here, you know, bandwidth unlimited or limited. Now, you also have for the Xbox rolling cash. Now, you might say, what's rolling cash? I'm glad you asked. That's a very good question. Rolling cash is, if you're flying uh, in the same places over and over again, what the sim is doing, it's going to download all the satellite and photogrammetry and all that stuff, and it's going to store it onto your Xbox. And by default, it's going to keep eight gigabytes. Gigabits? gigs. It'll keep eight gigs of data for your rolling cache. So it means then if you fly back into that area, it will load up quicker, right? Now, if you, for example, fly in the United States and then you want to go to, I don't know, Australia. Once you go to Australia, because it's a rolling cache, it'll start downloading Australia. And if you go back to America, well, sure, it has to do America again. But if you're flying in and around the same location over and over again, you might be exploring a region uh, or it could be your local airport. Do you know what I mean? Big B is bits. Bytes. Bytes. Yes. Megabytes. See? Even I'm learning today, lads. Here's a guy who didn't get enough sleep. Now, if you wish, you can turn the rolling cache off. Uh, I've done some testing in the wee hours of this morning. If you turn it off on the Xbox, it gives you the teeny tiniest little performance boost. But it's you can't see it. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're on a variable refresh rate, it'll probably give you a 3 or 5 FPS. If you're not on a variable refresh rate, uh, my monitor has one, but my TV doesn't. Um, it, it makes little to no difference whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? So we don't need to worry about that at all for the moment. So, moving on. The flight model. This is, is not really important. Just keep it on modern. Uh, there's going to be some aircraft coming out um, on the marketplace that may require the legacy or the old FSX, but for the minute, just leave it on modern. Then we have miscellaneous, right? Here you have your language, your units of measure. So we can be on the US system, we can be on the metric system, or we can go hybrid. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Then you have a pilot avatar. Here's a dude who looks like a dude disguised as another dude. Now, at the moment, you have 24 different dudes and dudettes in which you can select. And these are the pilots that you see in your aircraft. Uh, so your main pilot, you, you can look like him right there. 
or her or him or her or him or her. Uh, and it's just different uh, uniforms and stuff. Now, there are more of them on the way. And there's also talk of customizing, putting your own face into one of them. So that could be fun. Then you have a co-pilot avatar. That's the person going to be sitting next to you. And then you have your instructor avatar. So it's about customizing it. Do you know what I mean? You can make up stories. So here we have, you know, Billy. And Billy's good friends with Jenny. And Jenny is very good friends with Brian. And they all got on well together. However, one day, Brian said, I'm going to change my clothes and I'm going to be the pilot. Oh no, that's not Brian at all. That's Cynthia. Hang on, go back there. Uh-oh. You've broke it. Hang on. Oh no, you can't change... You can't change Brian's clothes. That is terrible, sad, isn't it? We'll leave him at that. Which you know what I mean. That's what you can do. Uh, then you have the about. The legal information, the credits, and then the Xbox. You know, some bedtime reading, if you will. Last but not least, we're going to have a look at the accessibility. Now... Enabling a screen narrator, essentially anywhere that you point your mouse or your cursor on your controller over a menu and anything that's kind of readable. Well, you know, this guy will talk like this and explain what to do. That's that guy, the narrator, right? Uh, and you can change that and, you know, change the speed and his pitch and all this kind of good stuff. So, you know, if you have difficulty uh, reading, that's going to be a good thing for you. It's all about accessibility. Then we also have then the user interface uh, and this is kind of again entirely up to you I have a set to 18 we can go absolutely bananas here and start scrolling it upwards and that's what see, you see what it did it made it bigger uh, but that's what it does then you have the interface scale that's okay menu tool tips now this is if you want to see tool tips on the UI uh, or on uh, on different parts of the aircraft so I have them turned off because I'm used to the sim but if you're not used to the sim well, you can turn them on and it'll kind of explain to you what different things does Story time with Murph. Absolutely keen. Then you have the instrument name tooltips. So if you're, if you want to know, it's great for learning, right? So if you're in the cockpit and you want to say, what's that weird looking round thing? It's like a clock, only different. And it's going anti-clockwise. Well, move your cursor over it. And once you have it over, a little bubble or cloud, speech bubble, will appear and it'll tell you what it is. And again, I turn them off because I like guessing. Oh, that's the thing that does the other thing. Do you know? Then you have the instrument description tooltips. Uh, now, if you, for example, if you're going to put the mouse over, say, uh, the gear lever, the gear lever, up or down, it's going to tell you, well, this is the gear lever. It goes up and it goes down. Your landing gear, your wheels. Uh, so that's what you can do there. And so I have it set to instant. I'm just going to turn that one off. Then you have your background opacity, where you can, you know, again, this is all for your accessibility. All right. Uh, main color you can change, the menu animations, that's like... Everything's really nice. If I hit save, it like it transitions and all this kind of nice stuff. You can turn them off if you want to. It makes little to no difference. Uh, you can turn on the subtitles. Also, you have the pre-flight uh, cinematics. Now, here's a tip. Tip number, where, what number are we at? If you're using a flight sim, we tend not to start on the runway. Because other people could be starting uh, at the gate or in parking or whatever. And the last thing you want to do is spawn in on the runway and someone's on a short final and they'll say... Why? Do you know? So what we do is uh, try and start on parking. And I'll show you how to do that now in a second. What this little option is, if you do decide to start on the runway, maybe you're offline or you're not flying with people on the network. Well, this menu is, you can turn this off because when, in, when you boot into the sim uh, and, you know, you start on a runway, it gives you the whole plane taxiing into position while it's loading up. It's a little kind of a cinematic. That's where you can turn it off if you wanted to. Then you have your cursor acceleration. Oh, hang on, is this what I'm looking for? Will that help? No. Cursor max speed. Speed and power. Well, that's really fast there now. We'll leave it at seven because uh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you're using a mouse, you're going to say, yeah, it's, it's only okay, Murph. Do you know what I mean? So we'll apply and save that. So they're your general options. DC says, I don't care for the new tool tips. No, they're, they're a bit intrusive. Um, but again, you know, they could be grand for just the uh, the Xbox users. Next up, we're going to go into our assistance options. Assistance? Yes, we need some. So we can start with our aircraft systems. So essentially, this is you telling the sim what you wanted to help you with. So you're basically saying, simulator, I want you to look after the following. So, because I'm on the Xbox, we have auto mixture. At the moment, I have it turned off. If I'm on the PC, I have an axis on my controller that controls the mixture. So, for the Xbox, because I'm only using the controller, I'm going to turn the auto mixture to on. That's important. Um, the aircraft lights, 
Again, I usually hit the L key. Now, I know what the switches are. I can turn them on and off, so I'll control them. Then you have what's called a gyro drift. A gyro drift occurs um, with your magnetic compass and your gyroscopic compass. Uh, it drifts. It moves. So every kind of 15 minutes or so, you kind of have to zero it to your magnetic compass. It's called gyro drift. Uh, so here you can let the simulator look after all of that. Moving on, we have failure and damage. Crash damage, I turned it off. Why? Well, I'm using an Xbox controller. Who knows what could happen? Aircraft stress causes damage. Again, I have it turned off. Engine stress causes damage. Again, I have it turned off. And then we have icing effect. So if you're flying up through the clouds, the higher you go, the colder it gets. Well, I'm not going to go into physics. We need Fabio here for that. But, you know, the long and the short is, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. And if you have clouds or moisture in the air, well, that freezes. And if you fly through it, well, your aircraft will freeze. If your, air, or if your airplane freezes, well, the control surfaces that allow you to move, well, they can't move. Plus, it adds an absolute ton of weight onto the aircraft. So, we have an option here. We can have it on or off or visual, right? So, if you want to have it on, it means if you do pick up ice, your aircraft will be heavy. You'll have to de-ice it if it has de-icing capabilities. You can leave it off. It'll never show. Or you can have visual only. Um, until I would recommend until you're kind of comfortable with the aircraft systems and how to de-ice and do all this kind of stuff, leave it on visual only. All right. Next up then we have our navigation aids. This is how we find things in front of us and in the world. So we have route and waypoints. You can turn this on and it'll show you indicators of where to follow your route in the real world. Think of it like your, you know, like your racing games, your forces and all these. You know the way like they have like the green line on the track and then when you need to hit the brakes it goes red and if, you know, you just want to coast it'll be yellow. Uh, well don't worry about the, the colours here but it will give you a navigational aid on where to go. Uh, same a taxi ribbon. A taxi ribbon is essentially going to draw a little ribbon on the taxiway where you want to take off from. Uh, your landing path, that's going to appear boxes for your approach as you fly down. So it's helping you to stay within these boxes as you're going to land. And if you do that, your landings will be better. So if you want to learn how to do all landings and how if you want to perfect your landings, well, maybe turn on the landing path because the sim will tell you these are the altitudes you need to be at as you approach the runway. And if you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again, well, you, you won't need them on. You can turn them off and then you can show your friends how good you are at landing. Joe, that's what that does. Uh, and then we have smart cam mode. Smart cam uh, will, how it's supposed to work is if you're flying along somewhere, you know, uh, and you're kind of idle and uh, it'll automatically zoom in on something important. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you guys have played Grand Theft Auto. If you don't touch the controls for a while, for a while, you know the way the camera kind of starts looking around at different things. You know, your man could be scratching his butt, or you know, there's a, an argument or whatever. It's kind of in the same vein, whereby it might check out a local POI, uh, it might look at a different aircraft, or uh, you know, an animal or a something. That's what smart camera mode does. All right. Next up, then we have notifications. So we have piloting and control notifications. This is basically going to tell you on the screen if you're doing something wrong with the aircraft. It's going to say, you know, you need more power, turn on your lights, do this, do the other. So it's going to be telling you with on-screen prompts what to do. That's what they do. Same with flying tips, same with your objectives, and same with software tips. Now you might say software tips, turn them on if you want. The sim will try and hold your hand to say, try this, do that, and don't do this. That's what that does. Next up we have piloting. Take off auto rudder. Now, with the Xbox, you control your rudder with these guys. Music loud, he says. How do we turn that down? Hang on, bear with me. Is that better? If I'm ever doing nothing wrong, this is me, by the way. Just say, Murph, it's wrong. You're doing it wrong, Murph. Okay. Many buttons. Um, so with your takeoff auto rudder, as I said, on the Xbox, you use the triggers to control your rudder, okay? Uh, but if you want, turn it on to on, and then you just need to worry about taking off. Add power and take off. So this kind of helps you as you're flying along. Assisted yoke, I'd recommend against it. Don't use it. You need to figure out how the aircraft flies and how it responds. Uh, assisted checklist, again, if you're going through a checklist, each aircraft has its own unique checklist. Anything from, you know, your pre-flight checks 
Yes, it's an airplane. How do you turn it on? How do you start up the engines? How do you do all the systems? That's where all that stuff is there. Assisted takeoff and landing. Again, the sim is going to take over your aircraft and help you along. It's going to try and fly you in the right direction. Uh, I leave everything off because, meh. AI radio communications, as in the ATC. I don't fly with ATC in the sim. Um, an anti-stall protection. That's handy. So if you're flying along and, you know, you want to give it socks, if you have an anti-stall protection, that means the sim is going to take over your aircraft, take control of your aircraft, if you're going to stall it. And by stalling, it means you're not moving fast enough to sustain flight. And you'll stall it, and you'll drop. Like a bat out of hell. Auto trim, uh, I leave that on. Uh, because, well, I've no trim wheel. And uh, with an aircraft trimming it, as you're flying it, you have a pitch trim, elevator trim, or you'd have an aileron trim. Essentially whereby it takes the pressure off you having to constantly try and maintain a level flight. You can add in a bit of trim, which is usually a small little flap on the either rudder or the elevator uh, that'll maintain that angle of attack as you fly without you having to hold the yoke back, hold the joystick back, or indeed hold your controller back. That's called trim. So I'm going to leave auto trim on. It's okay. It's not great. It does a bit. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the Airbus auto trims anyway. Correct. 100%. Then you have assisted controller sensitivity. Apply sensitivity tweaks to the yoke commands, allowing for easier control when using an Xbox controller. I have that turned off. Will I turn it on for the crack and see what happens? We'll turn it on and see what happens. Next up then we have POIs. These are called points of interest. And it's basically saying is, if you come across something important in the sim, be it a landmark or a city or an airport or animals or whatever, um, we'll put in little notification bubbles on the screen so you can fly towards them i leave them off and sometimes they're really handy to have do you know what i mean so uh i leave them off bad dog is in the house he's a great dog really great dog he says murphy you start again someone knocked on my door <laughs> oh dear um but don't worry these are going to be recorded we'll we'll push them up on youtube give us help me out with that and uh yeah like there's so much to learn from flight simulation i'm just trying to give kind of a crash course on the xbox side of the house uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll do this a lot. Don't worry. Um, so there are your POI markers. And then last but not least, we have the user experience. Uh, and this is essentially when it comes to a lot of the ATC stuff. So it's basically saying, do you want to have the air traffic control UI panel open when you start your flight? Some people like to do that. Uh, do you want to show messages uh, in the ATC menu? So if they're talking to you, it'll type up what they were saying. So if you forget what they said, well, now you can read the screen. So you can turn them on or off. ATC voices, if you want to hear voice from ATC, or you can turn off the voices and just read the text uh, of what they're saying. You can do the same with the checklist. You can do the same with the VFR map, navlog, and your autopilot mode. So all of them can be turned on from the uh, assistance options. So I'm going to hit apply and save. <laughs> 